Welcome to the Triple P Podcast, Preds, Pucks, Pinoys, hosted by Justin Bradford and Matt Best. Hello, it's me, Justin, and that's Matt. Oh, I was right like, there. what are you doing? <laughs> Welcome to Triple P, Preds, Pucks, Pinoys. Uh, sorry that it's been so long, but here we are. We are two busy lads, but we are back. Yeah, we, you are, can, we are back. You can take that as TWO busy lads or TOO busy lads. Any yeah, which way, ways. really. Any which way. That totally, totally works. But I mean, a lot's happened, obviously, with hockey. A lot with the Predators has gone on ever since. And we are here to discuss it, to make you happy. Because, I mean, actually, it's a really good feeling when people are demanding episodes. That actually makes you feel pretty damn good. <laughs> it, it is pretty nice. <laughs> It's I mean, like, half the time we recording? we come on here half the time and just like shoot the shit for the most part, which is fun and I love it. I just yeah. never thought there would be a way in life that people would be like, "Hey, can you two idiots go talk?" I'm like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> well, we can do that." I hate you for not talking. <laughs> go talk more, and then we'll do it too much um, at no, no. another place. Um, but yeah, uh-huh. no. But seriously, folks, we appreciate you demanding it. It reminds us because we get so bogged down in our daily lives. <laughs> and in jobs and i'm so busy right now with mine uh it is medicare annual enrollment i'm learning so much about that right now and that ends december 7th so be a little less stressful at the day job um have a wedding that that i'm planning as well uh at middle of hockey season all this stuff you had a uh, trip the, over the weekend too had a quick trip over the weekend yeah, which was here. which was fun um let's see but the fiance is out of town on a, on a work trip. And so I'm trying to turn over the house and put up our, our Christmas decorations, get those out already, nice. get the Halloween ones put up. When is it acceptable to put up Christmas decorations? Okay. We're going to start off with this. Okay. Oh, I didn't so, know you had this plan for later or something. No, no, no. I, I'm happy with this. Okay. So let me preface this by saying, you know, I, I realized something. I realized a couple things. This is purely an American argument, I believe. Because, I, because, well, the reason it's, it's a bigger deal in America, but when is it appropriate to put it up? Yeah, yeah. Because Canadians don't have a holiday in between Halloween and Christmas, a we major do. holiday. We do. We have Remembrance Day. Okay. When I say holiday, did you decorate for? No, okay. That makes sense. I thought you meant like just a, it's on the calendar. And like people just, in Canada take Remembrance Day pretty seriously. We have Veterans Day. Yeah. And, and, and yes, I mean, uh, Remembrance Day is huge. For those of you that don't know, I've seen the question asked in the Predators Facebook group of broadcasters wearing the poppy on their lapel. That is a poppy um, for remembering veterans. I mean, it's, yeah. it's something that Americans did before, but it just doesn't happen as much. It's mostly the anything of British descent. You see a lot of it in, in Britain, Canada, whatnot. So that's the explanation there. But, I mean, decorating holidays. So Halloween's a decorating holiday for some folks. Thanksgiving is a decorating holiday. Yeah, uh, put, I feel like that's just like a like fall decor. Yeah, like a thing. corn husks and all that. Other yeah, kind of cornucopias yeah, yeah. and turkeys and gobble to your wobble. Yeah. <laughs> um, so lots of those things. I used to be the type of person that was like, I'm not doing anything Christmas <laughs> until Black Friday. That is the day that it's acceptable to listen to Christmas music and put up the decorations. And I'm all out. But until then, Thanksgiving, damn it. The pandemic changed me. <laughs> and the reason why it changed me, because I realized I don't need to be triggered over something so silly as you try to take away some other person's happiness and what makes them feel happy and make them feel good. So put up your decorations whenever you want to. Leave them up all year round. If it makes you happy, then do it. That's what matters. You are not hurting anyone else yeah. by doing it. It is not disturbing anybody's peace. It's not breaking anybody's rights. It is not infringing on anybody and what they're doing for you to have your Christmas tree up early or for you to listen to some Christmas or holiday music I'm at any time of the year. With so all of that, just don't shove Christmas music down my throat like two weeks ago. That's not okay, well. Yeah, right. That's like a personal preference. For yes, you. That's, yes, that's yes. Personal preference. Right. Like the, I was, I was out for Korean barbecue, and we're sitting there, and then all I hear is "All I want for Christmas is you," and I'm like, "It's not even Halloween yet." And like when this happened, oh, oh, I was like okay. that's a bit much. And then maybe it was on like a Mariah Carey superstation or something like that. But no, I, oh no, no, she she thaws early. Oh, she does indeed. I mean, great tune, top three Christmas song for sure. Oh but yeah, just but see and see yeah, I'm yet. I'm obviously not going to do anything until Halloween's over. Yeah, but 
And it's one of those things Alex and I talked about it. She's like, so, you know, we're typically really busy Thanksgiving week. Sometimes I might be traveling up north or something like this, or you know, family might be in town and they might have a busy weekend. We can't even get it up till December. Could we <laughs> like put stuff up a week before? I was like, yeah, no problem. It's yeah. totally like it's, there's, it doesn't bother me anymore because it's like it'll be happy what to have your, things around. What was your like tradition growing up with your parents? Because for me, we don't put Christmas stuff up like at my parents' house until after my dad's birthday, which is very early December. Okay. And we just wait because like the whole thing is we celebrate his birthday and then as a family we put up the Christmas tree, the Christmas decorations. Okay. And then we go hard like kind of thing. Yeah. But I mean, until then, it's like there's a lot of prep as my mom goes all out in the house, like the staircase going upstairs covered in like garland and shit like that and looks super nice. And then like she brings out all the decorations. Garland and shit like that. I don't even know how to describe <laughs> it. And then she brings out all the decorations for like the foyer and the front and all that. But the lights don't go up and the tree doesn't go up until after my dad's birthday. And that's just how I've always grown up. So respecting okay. people's traditions like is all good in my books. Just yeah. Get away with the Christmas music in October. Okay, okay fair, fair. Uh, so for me, I typically would just be like after Thanksgiving that weekend if we had time, and if not, it'd be the first weekend in December. Yeah. I mean, in in a city I grew up in 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 Franklin, the Christmas parade was typically for a lot of cities. Yeah, the Christmas parade is typically the first weekend of December. In where I'm at, I think it was three years ago before the pandemic. Wow, um, it started being <laughs> held in late November. But see, that's it's different there because right? there's like it's already Christmas season, like, yeah. especially once you get past Remembrance Day. It is Christmas <laughs> it's season, right? Cold as shit up here. Not right well, now, yeah. but like <laughs> mid to late November. Uh, it's not, yeah. not a good time. So that's I mean, that's for, for us. My dad was always a bah humbug in terms of decorating. He would always get gifts and, and you know, partake in everything. But it was like, well, I'm not going to get the things out of the basement. I don't want to get them out of the garage. <laughs> I have to haul this shit down. And, I got to bring it back. I'm not going to do anything. It's you and your mom. <laughs> it's like okay dad thanks what it would be yeah it was that's just how it was and to me i'm like i want to get it i'm going to put up the village oh i'm going to do this I'm gonna mm. do this. and i had to stop myself today at costco from getting the the disney christmas tree uh thing that's uh, goes on the table and it has rotating trains oh, on cool. it and plays music and the thing is i looked it up it's only 99 dollars at costco on amazon it's 189 so you're you should have got it no. Yeah. No. No. Don't be a bad you influence. Sh- I'm not being a bad influence. Because the I man already, who, I already the man who else. loves Disney more than I love anything in this world, I think, <laughs> passed up something that was like fifty percent off, and you're describing it in precise detail. Okay, but I have Come something on. else. I have something else. Disney coming. I bought um some of the fiftieth anniversary ornaments from Shop Disney because it was there's a sale. Okay, your excitement for that compared to the thing that you were talking about at Costco, totally different. I know, because these are just ornaments. This is yeah. like an all-in-one thing. But it's $99. Yeah, do you see the big smile you have on your I... face when you're talking about it? I'll think about it. If because... you like it, buy it. Oh, God. That's treat... awful you're doing, advice, you're doing a treat the... I know, yeah. you're doing a treat yourself. I but I did treat myself at Costco, and I t- today I bought a sous vide. And I What's bought a vac. That? Oh Jesus! You have to remember, I'm uncultured. I know it's spelled S O U S V I D E. Yes, I bought a sous vide, and I also bought a vacuum sealer because both were on sale. Oh yeah, yeah. This is way too fancy for me to ever use. Not ever. You'll grow into it. Yeah, maybe when I'm like older. Don't you say it. I was Don't. nice about it. You know I was. You know I wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I saw your mouth stop and be like. <laughs> Shit, I had to think about off. the word. Um, <laughs> next time you go to Costco, because I don't have a membership, so therefore I don't go. I need oh, you boy. to try something that I saw on Instagram. Oh, and it's I, a hack. It's not a hack, and it won't cost you much money because it's with their food. Much. Uh, oh. I need you to get a hot dog, uh-huh. and I need you to get a slice of pizza. Oh, do that all the time. And I need you to put the hot dog out of the bun. Nope, not doing it. I saw it on TikTok, not doing it. I need you to roll that mf -er up. Nope, nope, not doing it. throw it down the gullet. No, no, no. It looks so good. No, it doesn't. It's uh, it's hot dog. It's a hot dog pizza as a bun. Okay, yes, that's fine, but I prefer to enjoy each separately. No, efficient. Have you seen the episode of The Office where why say more words when few words does (sighs) trick? 
It's efficient. Oh no, we got to like dressing up my hot dog with the fixings and everything too. So I don't want to put that together with the pizza. I think relish and onions are going to taste weird. Like onions are fine if they're cooked with the pizza, but not raw. Just get, it's just extra meat on your pizza. That's all it really you is. You just want me to do it for the vine. I really That's... do. I really want, because I know I think you'd probably either take a picture or record it and all oh, of yeah, me of wants that. Oh my God. Now what I wish we had here at American Costco was the poutine that you can get at Canadian mm. Costco. Yeah, no, that is pretty good. That's like yeah. when I used to uh, live in Ottawa, the only reason I had a Costco membership was to go the over cafe. the border to go to Quebec and buy beer in bulk at the Costco oh my God. and for the poutine made in Quebec at the Costco. Oh, my God. Let's see. But dumb me was kind of smart back yeah, in the day. Kind of smart. Yes. But yes, I bought a sous vide because I want to be able to cook my meats and have them be nice and tender and juicy. You can also do vegetables in a sous vide as well. I'm very much excited for that. And a vacuum sealer because that's some dad energy right there. That is some dad energy. That's but but you need the vacuum sealer to truly sous vide properly. Yeah, I'm looking like I'm looking on Google yeah. images. I know what a sous vide is. I just okay. did. And, and they're both they're no. both on sale. Each of them were 50 bucks off. Right oh, that's now. really good. So here's the funny thing. So I called my dad because I'd been talking about it and, and everything. He doesn't have a sous vide, but he has a vacuum sealer because he buys all these meats and has like two deep freezes in his basement. Smart man. That's a dad. <laughs> right. And so, so vacuum seals the meat when he buys it on sale. And he's like, well, Merry Christmas. He's like, what? He goes, you just mommed yourself. It's like, what? I'm like, oh, no. He's like, I got you one already for Christmas. I was just hoping that you would be able to wait. Oh, long. no. A vacuum sealer or a sous vide? A sous vide. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do? Well, no, he, no. He's like, I'll just take it back and I'll, I'll find something else for you or give you the money. That's nice. And I was like, okay, I appreciate the thought. Dad. I didn't mean to ruin it. It's just it's on sale and I've been wanting one to try so I can cook. It's like, I want to try it and it's going to go back up in price at Costco. And it's quality one at, from Costco, too. It's like, no, 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 I get it. But, you know, your mom used to do this. I'm like, I did not I did not do that because I didn't say, oh, but Jerry, I want this. Jerry, I want this. <laughs> and then go buy it for myself because I was complaining about not getting it soon enough. I just been mentioning I wasn't expecting it because we have a wedding coming up. And we got a wedding gift from them. Yeah, so, no, that works. And, like, yeah. I understand you buying it before because the Christmas season, you're probably going to entertain some people and you want to yeah. make them some And I'm a food. grown man, too, so I wasn't expecting yeah, a well. gift like that necessarily. So I was buying it for myself to use. Yeah. No, that's Plus, my good. dad already got me a smoker for my birthday. That was my birthday gift. Your dad's killing it with the gifts. Well, yeah, especially because that sucker was fifty percent off, and he loves a good deal. That, yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> See, it runs but, in the family. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of went all out at, at Costco. It's, it's not good when I'm unsupervised. Yeah, no, I can see. Spent $450 didn't you buy, bucks at Costco. Didn't you buy one of those big ass pillows there last year, or like when we were on the other show? I remember you bringing it. It was like a squish pillow. Or a Squishmallow or something like that. And it was... Oh, yeah, it's the Yoda. Yeah, it was freaking baby, huge. Sorry, it's Grogu. Yeah. yeah, that was the one, like, very memorable Costco conversation I yeah, remember us having it was before. the... I know she doesn't listen, so I can go ahead and out her. <sighs> that was... Alex told me to go in and get the Squishmallow at Costco of Grogu or Chewbacca, whichever one. That was going to be a gift for me. Mm -hmm. So I bought it. I paid for it. She never paid me back for it. Oh, so that's just the not a pocket. That's a you treat now. She just told me to get. I have not used the thing once. It sits on the couch. It takes up space. What the hell are you going to use it for? I've, to me, that's decoration. Well, I, I thought, you know, something to like lean up against if you're reading or something like that. Or to like hold on to. But like, I'm not that kind of person. I don't snuggle with a pillow when I'm watching TV. <laughs> Plenty of people do. I just, that's not comfortable for me. I, I don't need that. I never have pictured you as like a snuggler with pillows. Oh, when I'm sleeping, though, I need four pillows, dude. Me too. I put, like, okay, we'll get into hockey eventually, I promise. <laughs> one goes between the legs, right? Yes, sir. One goes on your head, obviously. Yes. One goes, like, around your arm. Mm -hmm. And then usually I got one, like, on my back or something. So if I flip over, I got that you one are, I can put on my You arm. are goddamn right, Yeah, sir. that's that's how you, you <laughs> efficiently sleep is with four pillows just like that. Because I want to feel like I want I want my bed to be big, but I want my little cocoon. Yes, and then I can always expand my cocoon by moving a pillow. Exactly. Well, yeah. No, 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 no. And and because having the pillow on my back also makes me feel like I'm getting big spooned. I kind of like that. <laughs> I I do <laughs> like that a lot. It's uh, nice. Oh uh, god. <laughs> so it's comforting. It Just like comforting. how the Preds have been playing. There we go. They've been playing very comforting overall. I mean. 
So, what a transition. <laughs> Seven of ten points so far on this road trip with one game left. This, this team has been very interesting because they started off a little rough, and we were like, oh, well, this is what it's going to be. You know, there's going to be some exciting plays. They're going to win some. They're going to lose some. Right now, the team is clicking even through some injuries, even through a Forsberg injury. But what I'm liking and what's changing so many things for me is that you have players like Matt Duchesne and Ryan Johansson playing above where they've been playing the past few seasons. That changes everything from what my expectations were because I was expecting them to just play what they have been playing like, which is uh, under normal, under average bad, bad. for them. Yeah, bad, especially given their contracts. But them overperforming compared to before, which is what should be normal for them, has changed a lot for this team right now. And then you have some good timely goals coming in from a Tanner Janot or a Philip Tomasino, or you have Roman Yossi continuing to be Roman Yossi. And then you have Yusuf Saros just completely standing on his head, making some stellar saves to at least get them a point in Chicago when they probably didn't deserve it as well has changed what this team is doing right now. And I'm still not going to change my outlook overall. They're going to be, you know, around like quote unquote 500, or they're going to be a very much in a gray area bubble team, like an eight or nine, yep. 10 in the conference kind of thing. But right now they're playing good hockey and they're finding ways to win. And you have people stepping up that are supposed <clears throat> to be performing to what you expect. You have your Matt Duchesne scoring goals in overtime or scoring a goal to get them on the board. You have Ryan Johansson putting the puck in the net kind of thing that's what you need for this team to be successful is those veterans stepping up but and it was, we made this point on penalty box radio as well you have young players also pushing these veterans to do better as well and i think that is a good thing as well that you have rookies and youth pushing the vets to be better because as we're seeing in this lineup john hines right now is not scared to go and put a rookie or a young person on one of the first two lines and give them more minutes as well. So they're each pushing each other. The veterans are pushing the young ones to be better. The young ones are pushing the veterans to be better. You haven't had this before because you haven't had young ones to deal with. Yeah, and usually John Hines has been dead set in his ways of this is my line and it's staying that way. And he's been evolving more and more. I know the last time we spoke on the podcast, my biggest problem with him was that he wasn't adapting to what's been happening in the games. He wasn't shifting his lines. He wasn't changing game strategy whatsoever. And he started to do that. I mean, he bumped Tanner Genoa up into the top six. He took Philip Tomasino off that fourth line and actually gave him a prominent role, despite still not playing heavy minutes like I'd like him to see. But it's also come at a cost. Tolvanen hasn't been playing as well. Right. Colton Sissons is getting an elevated role. Yakov Trenin's up a bit more. You're seeing a Michael McCarron enter the lineup. Uh. I want to talk about what you were talking about in terms of where this team could hypothetically finish at the end of the season. Agree or disagree, everything for Nashville seems to be clicking, like absolutely clicking. The things there are way more things going right than wrong. Therefore, a good record of seven, five, and one, right? The Colorado Avalanche, four, five, and one. A lot of bad shit's happening with that team. Nathan <laughs> McKinnon has barely played. Their big stars aren't really playing. Their goaltending's been shoddy at best. My whole question to you now is when both of these teams, if both of these teams go to their median and just play their average hockey. That's what scares me is that we're talking about Colorado being outside of the playoffs right now with nine points and Nashville being up there with 15. Can Nashville hold off the Jets, the Wild, the Blues, the Avalanche? I'm not too worried about right. the Stars, to be honest. The Stars are kind of just not great right now. But to me, it's like the Avs. Can they hold them off? Can they keep hanging and banging with the Jets, the Wild? Can they pick up those important points against uh, Chicago? I mean, they got one, so I'm not going to poo-poo on them completely. It, it feels like the perfect storm has to continue. But to me, I don't doubt that it can continue. I just don't think it can keep running at this high of a level. But I don't think they're as bad as I was saying they were going to be to start the year. Like They're, comp they're competitive. Yeah, they're, at least. they're and, and more competitive yeah. than I thought. Like, I, I thought you and I, and we've talked about this, that – they're a team that will be on the fringe of the playoffs, but for me that was like, yeah, they probably won't make it. To me now it's like, yeah, they're looking pretty good, and it's just I wouldn't be as surprised as I was. I do still have my doubts. Um, how long can you play UC Saros until he is just the most tired well, yeah. human being in the world? Right, right. Um, how long does Tanner Janot keep clicking at this high of a level? 
And I want to bring something up with Janot too. Tanner Janot reminds me a lot of Ryan Hartman. Remember Ryan Hartman with the Blackhawks? I think it was like his second or third year. Let me pull it up. There's also a nice big height differential too. Yeah, I mean, I, just in terms of production and like opportunity. So Hartman gets this big chance with the Blackhawks in 2016-17, scores 19 goals. The whole hype around Hartman then was like, oh my goodness, he's going to be great. He's going to be so good. And I think Predators fans know Ryan Hartman a little bit too. He comes and everyone's like, oh, he can score 19-ish goals, can't he? Because he scored eight goals the season after he scored nine or uh, 19. And people were like, oh, it's just a down year. This happens with these kinds of players all the time. I think the most notable one ever is Christopher Stieg. Christopher Stieg early in his career, 22 goals, 20 goals, had 23 at some point. But then he dips down. He gets 10, he gets 14, he gets 11, he gets 15. This is not me saying that Tanner Janot is not going to be the best hockey player ever. This is just me saying temper your expectations. Janot is the perfect guy on this team to fill a role when it's there, but he will also be pushed down the lineup pretty quickly if he slips up for a few games. Okay. I don't like the Ryan Hartman comparison. I just, the, the Hartman comparison is oh. only based on points and goals. Okay, and... okay. But the reason I don't like it is because Tanner Janot was undrafted. Ryan Hartman was a first round pick. That's way different expectations coming in for what people expect out of performance. And so when a guy like Ryan Hartman scores and produces, you're like, thank you, as what you should be doing as a first round pick, even if you're number 30. Right. Tanner Janot. What he's doing is him just having a career in the NHL and producing what he is right now is a major win just for him overall in his career because sure. he was undrafted and had to work his way up to this. So, which yeah, is, I which agree. Is awesome. Don't anoint him. Yes. Don't anoint him. But you can be very pleasantly surprised and oh, on the stand wagon for Tanner Janot because he is a guy that at least that we see right now, because things always fluctuate and change, right? Mm -hmm. He is a guy that can pound you in the face, be physical, and also put up some points. He and is he's a power forward is what he's becoming. He is legitimately right place, right time, and that's not luck. That's him like his hockey IQ, we've preached about it since we first saw him play right. in the NHL. That his hockey IQ is through the roof. The only reason I'm bringing up is just it's his stats that I'm looking at now. He's made the NHL and he's he's there. This is it. He's kind of showing that he's the real deal. He got protected. So now to me he's just what can he do now? What is the next step? Where I understand your argument with Ryan Hartman, with Christopher Stieg, that guy was a fifth round pick. So I think that one is a little more accurate in okay. terms of just where you were drafted and your expectations. It's not that I don't doubt Tanner Janot. It's just that if he scores 20 this year, don't expect him to score 20 every year in his career. If he scores. No, it could fluctuate between like 15, 20, 10, 12 year. Yeah, right? Like, year. yeah. That's, that's perfectly fine. The fact of the matter is, like, he will fill a middle six role for your team. Optimally, though, on a contending team, he's an awesome third liner that plays on your second unit on the power play and can get you 15 yeah. goals a year, which is not absurd, and can pot you like 40 points, which is awesome. But there's been some takes being like, Tanner Janot was a must pick up in fantasy hockey. It's like, well, he's not. Oh, oh, oh. Like, it's, he's not. Well, no, no. But he if you want to ride... Pretty... It'd be a deep league. It need to be a really deep right. league. And if you want to ride hot streaks and things like that, sure. If you want to must pick up from the Preds, Matt Duchesne's your guy, which still feels super dirty coming out of my mouth. Almost Ugh. a point per game still. It's pretty awesome watching him play. The uh, the onus on him to just shoot the puck this year is awesome. That's what Matt Duchesne used to do is shoot the puck a ton. In Ottawa, shoot the puck. Colorado, shoot the puck. And he came to Nashville, he's like, I don't want to. And, and, and I mean, if you're looking, if you're in a pretty deep league and you're needing some beefing up on assists, Mikhail Granlin has nine assists already this season. And so, you know, people always looking for that proper balance in terms of what kind of points you're trying to get in fantasy. So, again, yeah. deep leagues, because not the only predator that you'd probably be putting up high would be a use of Saros or Roman Yossi. Yeah, because you, you know what you're going to get. Yossi's probably like a top three defenseman fantasy wise this year. Yossi Saros, top five goalie. Um, it's just if you play in a league with wins, and wins is a big catalyst if you're in a points league, it's kind of risky each night trying to trot him out there and aim for the win. Um, but my favorite pickup this year from the uh, Predators has been Matt Duchesne. I've loved yeah. every second of him. So let's talk about Philip Forsberg and the thing that happens every season, which is he's injured. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
let me get and I'll, I'll throw this and it's been a while since I've had to throw this. Let's get the Toronto perspective. What <sighs> does this do? This type of injury where it's the it happens every year. What does this do for his value at the trade deadline or even in the offseason? Is this something that do you think teams even still care? Or are they still good with, oh, well, we know he's going to produce overall. He could be really great with our team, so we're still going to throw a lot at Nashville to try to trade for him. You want the perfect example from a perfect situation that actually happened from Toronto that I can draw on? Yeah. Frederick Anderson was one of the worst goaltenders in October with the Leafs. Just terrible. Slow starts every year. That did not stop the Leafs from trotting him out every single night in October for years and years and years. He then goes to Carolina and has one of the best Octobers of his career, one of the best stretches of his career, because Carolina did not give a shit about him having <laughs> slow starts in Toronto, because Toronto is a slow-starting team. It feels like a lot of bad luck with Philip Forsberg, but that it's just people know what Phil can do. Uh, he's a different kind of elite forward in the league where he's not afraid to hit, and that's the price you pay. You're going to get banged up. You're going to get hurt. And it's not like he's out there throwing his body every single night recklessly. It's just sometimes you're going to get a bad, like, a bad stretch. That's it. Like, you're going to hurt yourself, and it's going to happen. So you need to expect when you bring in a Philip Forsberg that he's probably going to miss 10 to 15 games a year. That's it. But he's going to hopefully not be injured at the end of the year in your playoff run. Because he's probably being a little more wise there. But to me, it doesn't affect his value whatsoever. I don't think teams really look at that unless it's like this guy's only played 40 games the last three seasons, like 40 games each season. Then mm -hmm. it becomes a bit of a problem, but yeah, gets banged up. Okay, cool. That's expected. I mean, what star player doesn't get banged up for like a week or two at a time? McKinnon did it last year. Uh, Matthews did it for a couple weeks last year. Crosby every year. Crosby every year. Ovechkin usually misses like a week at some point. Like, there, every player goes through it. It's just when it's your number one star player and it happens consistently, it's just you get used to it and you kind of get pissed off. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, breaking news. This just in. I got a direct message from Kyle. Says oh, you're a Geno hater. Not a Geno hater. I just don't want to make a bet with him that he scores 20 goals to get a Geno jersey. <laughs> he sent me a gif on Facebook. Better than a borrow. Oh. Uh, he also he messaged me and he thought we retired from the podcast by the way oh geez no we would put out a message for that uh also this just in seeing this from matthew defranks who covers the dallas stars after the the win that nashville had over the stars the stars held a lengthy team meeting after tonight's loss to nashville the game ended at 10 p.m and the players did not come out for interviews until 10 30 that team's uh Struggling is the nicest way to put it. 30 minutes of a team meeting after that. <laughs> you can tell the expectations there are slightly different. And I know this is just interrupting everything, but this is this is relevant news. And we on Penalty Box Radio, Jeremy Kigo, we're filling in for Glenn uh, on air, had Saad Youssef, who covers the Dallas Stars for The Athletic, who does a fantastic job. I mean, he is really, really good at his job. And I was very curious to hear his take on the stars and the expectations. And you start thinking about, too, they're an old team with yeah. some expectations. They're a really old team with a couple young guys. But they're overall a very, very old team with some lengthy expectations. And Ryan Suter has just been interesting uh, for that team. I don't want to get into Dallas Stars talk, but it's just interesting to see that that happens after Nashville um, and Nashville wins. It's like if we want to sum up the Dallas Stars talk really quickly – there are young guys who are supposed to take the next step and have been showing like continuous promise. Garyanov with scoring goals, Rupe Heinz with just being good generally, and people thought he could take that step and be an elite player this year. When you have three points and two points between the two of them, it's you're going to have a tough time. Joe Pavelski obviously was going to take a step back. Miro Heiskanen should not be your leading point scorer. And Ben Bishop right. should not look like a savior on most nights. Right. Right. Okay. The call-ups. Olivier, totally understand, totally good with. And McCarron, I would no. prefer him to be a call if he's an extra forward that is benched and just there for security and not actually playing. But fun story. Uh, those that don't know, Penalty Box already had a trip to Milwaukee and Chicago over the weekend to see the Admirals play, then bust down to see Chicago uh, against the Predators. And first of all, Milwaukee's awesome. They, they really took care of, of my people there. And they invited 
the group to go to practice. It was an optional one because they had a three and three. But Saturday morning went to practice and then got an arena tour, got to stand at the tunnel. The first group allowed since coming back to play, the first group allowed to greet the players through the tunnel as they hit the ice. That's cool. So pretty cool experience. Milwaukee animals are awesome. But at practice Saturday, uh, <laughs> here's a funny thing. It was all women on this trip and I was the only dude. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, and they didn't have any qualms about going up to players and talking to them or anything. So Matthew Olivier standing on the bench in his in, in performance clothes because he was not practicing because it was optional. And so the ladies went up to the glass behind the bench like, Matthew, can we get a picture? Oh, my God. And he's like, what? How do you know who I am? They're like, we're from Nashville. We love you. And he like seemed flattered and everything. Started talking to them. And they're like, "We miss you in Nashville. We need you back." He's like, I- "I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying." <laughs> He's like, "Let's take a selfie." And so they took selfies with him between the glass and everything. And then the next night in Chicago, after the game, I'm going downstairs and it was just me and Brooke Spratt, and that was it. I mean, not many people, especially when they're doing media availability through Zoom, you really don't have to travel unless you want to be there for the experience. Yeah. So. Walking into the Preds media room, I double take. I'm like, that's Olivier. <laughs> so Olivier joined the team after the Milwaukee Animals game on Saturday. He joined the team. He wasn't officially called up. But he was just there. He was with the team. It's, yeah. it's for payment purposes. That's why they don't do the call up yet. But he traveled with the team and then was with them as they came back to Nashville for practice. And then for, for this game against the Dallas Stars. So that happened. They basically was like, oh, well, we're going to be up north. You're going to be in Milwaukee, Chicago. The Admirals played um, the Chicago Wolves on Sunday <laughs> afternoon. So I was like, how about you just come on down? And that's exactly what happened. It was the perfect situation to not have to pay for a plane ticket for him. It's pretty good. Just get him on the on the charter. <laughs> so Olivia was with the team starting Sunday, even though it wasn't official until, what, Tuesday. But just a fun story about the call. But it was fun. <clears throat> I'm fine. I'm fine with Olivier. Totally fine with Olivier because he's shown that he can play a role on the fourth line um, and add a little bit to that with the, with the herd line and everything like that. But McCarron, no, I it, I didn't hear much about him tonight or sorry Wednesday uh, in this game. But it's more because that he only played eight minutes twenty six seconds. <laughs> only had twelve shifts. But the thing is. They also put him out there for 18 seconds on the penalty kill. I mm, mm, if gotta you're going stretch to play his a, legs. If you're going to bring up a forward that's going to play, please bring up a forward that deserves that opportunity to play more. Michael McCarron is for for all intents and purposes a pylon out there, just like Ben Harper. Those guys do uh, not belong in the NHL. I'd take Michael McCarron over Ben Harper. Well, yes, of course. But I'm saying in terms <clears> of what the Predators have in Milwaukee, that if you were going to make a call-up and actually put them on the ice, make it be Yuger Afanasiev. Or power forward. Or reward Cody Glass. Or Cody Glass. But, I mean, it's if you're looking for a bigger power forward guy, Afanasiev is right there, and he's a prospect. He can get a call up and yeah. deserve an, a, a start. <clears throat> Michael McCarron is not going to offer you any offensive upside. He's going to make a potentially dangerous play happen <laughs> and be a potential reason why you lose a game. Ben Harper will be a reason you lose a game. I uh, yeah. Period. No. So, uh, it's just so weird. I'm looking at the Admirals roster right now. And maybe reward Cole Schneider over Michael McCarron. Well, like Schneider's not under contract. I you can sign so, him, but that's what they'd have right? to do. Like yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with the Leafs and Josh Hosang. It's an AHL contract, but then you sign him. It's a two way. And oh, the Josh only reason Hosang. the only reason the Leafs don't have Hosang sign is because of cap issues, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Oh, the yeah. cap issues would not be present there in Nashville for Schneider. Um, I there's so many other names that I think you could have gone with. Afanasiev would have been my number one. Cody Glass would have been my number two. Uh, Glass averaging nearly two shots per game. He is a point-per-game player right now. Uh, I just... It's puzzling. <clears throat> because you see the Preds trot out. I need to clear my throat. I'm going to mute the recording and not you. Hold on. <laughs> see, that's yeah, some broadcasting. Um, you see the Preds have no problem playing skill players on the fourth line. But when they call players up, they're like, all right, right to the fourth line you go. So, like, just call a skilled player up and 
reshuffle your lines a little. It's not the hardest thing to do. Like, Trennan and Tolvanen are on the third line. Slide down Trennan. Bring up Afanasiev on the third line. The end. Like, it, it, it just seems too easy. But they decided, ah, open roster spot. Fourth liner. McCarron, okay, here, go. Now, bye. So it's, uh, I don't Blah. understand. I'll never understand bringing someone up to your lineup when there are more deserving folks that who fit in the mold of your team much better. Mm-hmm. I, I don't get it if there's, like, some shady secret handshake, like, oh, uh, you've got dirt on me. i got to call you up a couple times a year. Like, I I, I will never now, know. That's Ben Harper obviously has to have some dirt. <laughs> I don't know what that guy has, but I want some of it if I can just weasel my way around a career. I mean, mean, dear God. It is awful. Okay. We we got some of our hockey talk in as we basically were playing. Matt and I have not even talked for like two weeks, really. So this is our our catch-up time. There's been so much crap that's gone on. I saw the Leafs play. They got shut out. Or they didn't get shut out. They might as well have. I Um, saw the comparison pictures, and that was all cute. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So cute. The last three games I've gone to... Mm-hmm. Loss, loss, loss. Two were in Toronto, one was in Buffalo. Just, I I don't know, man. Like, stupid team. Then they go out tonight and they shut out the Flyers. This is not a Leafs <laughs> podcast. We're done with that. Um, I saw a concert for the first time. What would you see? I went and saw the Bleachers, who, okay. if you don't know who the Bleachers are, Jack Antonoff is their lead singer. He is in fun. He produces music for Lord. He produces a ton of Top 40 songs. And holy shit, that was amazing. It was at a, a venue that Drake just built called History, and it was damn. phenomenal. It was the first show I ever played there. Um, oh, damn, felt, so you're part of History. Oh, God, Jesus. Uh, it felt good to <laughs> just be around people and screaming, probably why my voice is like, I'm still trying to clear it up a bit. You sound like you smoked a pack. <clears throat> no, God, no. I was stressed about the Leafs game, but not enough to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I had something else too. Well, uh, well, I just want to say I want to ask you this then, because it it is weird when it's been so long to go into a venue or go into a place where all of a sudden there's a lot of people again. Because mm-hmm. like we have to, it's obviously here in the states it was a little bit sooner, but to like resocialize mm-hmm. into being in the group. So one, how did it feel going to a hockey game? What was like? What were the emotions you're feeling? And two, what did it feel like as you're going? Oh my God, I'm going to see a concert. I'm going to see live music. I'm going to see something cool. What what was going over with in your head? So the hockey game to me, like it all starts with what do I do before kind of thing. Like usually go out for a couple beers with a few buddies. Rub this one out. time, <laughs> rub two out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we went to a bar and had like two dollar beers and a bunch of people that I hadn't seen before or like because of the pandemic. They came out because they live in Toronto, and there was like eight or nine of us at the table. I was like, I haven't seen any of you in forever. This feels good. Then when we were in the Uber going to the Leafs game, I was like, I got my jersey on. Everyone in the car has their jerseys on. I was like, we're going back. And the crowd, despite the game being terrible, was Mm. loud because I think people just wanted to be around others again. And if you go to a Leafs game on a Monday against the Los Angeles Kings, tickets are usually a lot cheaper than they are if you go on a Saturday against the Bruins. And so the people that are there, the fans that can't afford those tickets, therefore only go to a few games a year and are more than willing to scream, ref, you suck with another word in there and are just more willing to (laughs) stand up and socialize. Like the whole time we're making friends in line. We're making friends at the bar. You're having a laugh in the bathroom, which is super weird still to me. Never understand the people who bring their drinks in there. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't mix pee with beer. Uh, but at the concert, it felt like I hadn't skipped a beat in terms of going to shows. Because we got in line, and me and my buddy instantly made friends with this group of three who came to the show from Edmonton. Because this is the only Canadian stop on the tour. And so we oh. talked to them at, all during the line. Like, the first, it was it was kind of a little awkward at first. Like, the oh, what do you do for a living? What do you do? And... Once we all got over that, it was just, you guys want to hang out for the whole show? And then hung out for the whole show, and they were super awesome people. Uh, it just, it didn't feel any different. Like, there, I guess there was that peace of mind for me that everyone had to show proof of double vax, and you had to go in with that kind of thing. And that was a little better for a lot of people in terms of, you can have your mask off if you have a beer in your hand and you're screaming a song at the same time. But... 
there were no fights because it's a Canadian concert and everyone was just happy. Like it was just, sorry. Sorry. Oh, so (laughs) before the show starts, I have to pee really bad. And I had this great spot with a bunch of our new friends and my buddy in the middle, like in GA and two of us were like, okay, we're going to go pee and then we'll just snake our way back in, which is normal. Everyone always does that. You just tap people on the back. Sorry, excuse me. So I'm going through and there's this big mother effer just not moving for anyone. And so I'm like, I'm bigger than my buddy who came with me. My buddy's like 130 pounds, 140 pounds soaking wet. So he can kind of sneak through and bump buddy and he doesn't know. I try to sneak through. I'm not very graceful. I bump buddy and his wine like pops out of his hand, but he catches it and it doesn't spill anywhere. And he looks at me. He's like, yo, what are you doing? I was like calm down i was like you didn't spill anything on yourself i was like everything's fine i was like i tried to say excuse me and you didn't move i was like we're done with this i went to the bathroom and i can hear him cussing me out as i'm going to the bathroom and then i was like i don't want to get kicked out of a concert especially the first one so i go do my pee i come back i tap him on the back in front of like his friends and stuff i'm like hey man are you okay? I was like, is everything good with you? I was like, there, there's no problem between you and I here. I was like, you have nothing spilled on you. I was like, we're good. You're good. And he's like, yeah, man, I, I'm really sorry. I overreacted. And I was like, this is so polite. I was like, you're all good, man. So Don't Canadian. worry about it. I was like, have a great show. Enjoy it. And we just walked away. Like So Canadian. It was the most wholesome experience where I think if this concert had happened pre-pandemic and people had been going to concerts all the time. I probably would have screamed shit at him. He would have screamed stuff at me, and we probably wouldn't have done anything because I'm a big baby. Um, then you would have gone outside and thrown maple syrup at each other and a few beaver tails. Yeah, and called him a hoser, and that would have been the end of that. But it just was <laughs> so nice to have an altercation with someone, and it just to be so polite and nice. I think it's because people want to not get kicked out as easily anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk to some people on airplanes. All right. Uh <laughs> Pop culture stuff is what I put in the agenda because we did not do any pre-planning on this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Disney Plus Day is coming up. You do have Disney Plus, right? Yes, I do have Disney Plus. Yes, I saw the Book of Boba Fett trailer. Okay, have you seen Shang-Chi? So I I, hate you. I got yelled at so so much when I went out with my buddies for the Leaf Game of the Concert that I haven't seen it because all of them have. I got yelled at you, for that. You're a bad Asian. I know. I even said that too. Don't worry. It co- oh, it comes out on Disney Plus. This yeah. Week. So I said I'm just gonna watch it on Disney Plus next I'm week. I'm gonna watch it on Disney Plus, it's even though it should have been a theater experience. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Yeah, 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 whatever, What's it's fine. that new movie with Zendaya? That's out. Dune. Dune. Have you Did seen you that? See that? Yes, of course I've seen Dune. I thought Shit. opening weekend. I, I see that. movies that I want to see opening weekend. Yeah, I don't. I reserve lazy. tickets and get the seats I want to get. You're I already smart, have my seats for Ghostbusters next week. I have no interest in going to see that. Oh, come on. Man. No, it's no, zero. See, no. your disappointment for that is a lot less than the other no. movies because you no. also know that. No, it's- no, 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 because I'm very curious on what this is going to be like. But the early reviews, I hope you're hitting the dumb button every time you cough. Oh, yeah. Only you get to hear me cough. Oh, great. I Like in OBS here, I just go to the audio That's mixer, great. I mute me, and then I cough. But Ghostbusters <laughs> getting reviewed pretty well, and plus it's Paul Rudd. I love so, Paul Rudd. Who's I don't the like sexiest bad man alive? You. Who's the sexiest man alive? No, Paul Rudd is. I said you. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> but And then Spider-Man soon. I'll see that. Don't worry. But Disney Plus Day coming up. And what I thought was really cool, they partnered with AMC, and I'm sure multiple other theaters, we got the email from AMC, that this weekend only, they're doing surprise screenings of favorites from different IPs within Disney. So they're going. You're, what you're going to do is you're going to buy a movie ticket, or if you're A-list, then you just reserve. And it's only five bucks for the ticket. It also gets you a 20-ounce drink and a small popcorn, or like a itty-bitty popcorn, and a poster. And there's going to be a Star Wars themed one where they're going to surprise you with a screening of a Star Wars film. You don't know which one. I'm reading all this right now. Yeah, they're going to do a Pixar one, they're going to do a Disney classic animation one, and then just a Disney movie one. So it's four different things. Only AMC, not in Canada. Oh, well, sorry. Anyways, for the majority of our American listeners, it's. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, friends. For those in the Nashville area, I did see, I know Bellevue's doing it, and Thoroughbred is doing it down in Franklin. 
and some of the showings are in the afternoons, but they're doing it through the weekend. I believe it starts to Thursday or Friday, and it goes for three days. So it might be just Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Only one showing a day at these theaters. But I'm going to the Star Wars one on Friday. So if you want to join me and Cameron Gumpy, I do. I know you do. I wish you could. And I'm, we're curious because like it has run times. Also, it features a short film as well. And so we're looking at run times going, okay, if this one says it's two hours, 13 minutes, which one is exactly two hours, 13 minutes? Or does that include the short film? Which movie is it going to be? For me, okay, I'm going to say what I would prefer. Then you tell me what you would prefer if you're doing Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. For Star Wars, I've obviously seen all the sequels very recently because they've been out recently, mm -hmm. plus Rogue One and Solo even though I'd love to see Rogue One again on the big screen. But for me, even though I don't necessarily care for episodes one and two as much, I would still be totally cool with anything episodes one through six for a surprise screen. I, yeah, it, like my whole argument, and I was going to try and be funny about it, but honestly, <laughs> to watch the pod racing in episode one would be pretty, the Darth Maul fight. Would be pretty kick ass, right? Yeah. Like, Episode one gets pooped on a lot, but there's a lot of cool scenes that would just make it so much better. At oh, the and the music theater. too. Like I haven't seen. I saw episode one in the theater with my dad. I was mm -hmm. like seven years old, six years old, or something like that. And I was like, "Oh, it's super cool!" Like that to me was oh yeah, the bee's knees. nostalgia. Yeah, so I think going to see that would be super awesome. I wouldn't mind seeing like Empire Strikes Back and all that, but oh, I just, I'd love to see Empire. I just would. I don't. I wouldn't want to see any of the last three. I right, think that's, are, that's what I was saying, yeah, too. Those are the... Because I did it recently. What be doing? Yeah, I've, I remember it. I yeah, want to see like, something that I haven't seen in a movie theater in a long time yeah. or ever. I want to see them like, <laughs> how is it optimized for today's sound systems and today's yeah, screens? exactly. Like, that would be cool to me. No, I'm and like, like, if it was Pixar, <clears throat> I'd probably like to see, because the music and the action, the Incredibles, I think, could be fun. Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc., Definitely would be fun. So there's there's so many. So I might because Alex is on business. I might do more than one. We'll see. Do it. Uh, <laughs> well, it depends on my time, how much time I have to do stuff. But I think that's a really cool thing, like to do that surprise screen because you will not know until the movie starts. Like that's super. That's cool. pretty cool. It's a gamble, but if you're a fan, it doesn't <clears throat> matter. It's and kind of. Yeah. It's weird though because like when you go to a movie aren't you in kind of a, a certain mood based on what 100%. Movie you're saying, right? That's that's the excitement for this so cuz it's Star Wars. I'm going to be fine with whatever it is. I'll still be excited and for anybody else that's going it's only 5 bucks. Yeah. I just I just so, think with Pixar it'd be different though cuz you could go in and be like I'm going to go see Cars and be all fired oh. up to watch a racing movie kind of thing. And then you go see like I don't know, Finding Nemo and you're like, "Oh, okay, it's different." Yeah, but it's, I'd still be fine with that. Oh, no, I'd be fired up, too, but it just feel drastically different. It's like if you go to the movie theater and you're like, I'm going to go see a horror movie and shit my pants. And it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm watching Step Brothers. Well, okay, so the the one that probably th there's such a variety could be just the Disney fan favorite movie and the Walt Disney Animation Studios because the choice between those. Like, there's only so many Pixar and Star Wars ones, but Disney and then Walt Disney Animation I mean, <laughs> I'm looking through Disney animation. I like, to be honest, I didn't know the difference between like, I didn't know there were all these different subsectors of Disney. Oh yeah. But it is. But those, that's a true game. <laughs> yeah. That the, was a true game. Like the percentages of each one. Now, granted, it's going to be something that's probably more accessible, but anyways, I just thought that was pretty cool and really need you to see Shang-Chi. And that means you probably have not seen Eternals. We can't talk about that. You are nope. killing me with our Marvel discussions here. I will get to it. I watched all of you on Netflix. <laughs> I was about to say that's a little stocky. No, nah, I watched that's... all of you. Uh, I watched most of Big Mouth season five. Okay, you've been doing more TV series, and I've been more on movies. Yeah, well, it's so... easier for me to turn on a TV series. I know, and I know. like be working at the same time because, with, especially with Big Mouth, I don't need to retain all of the information. Did you watch Only Murders in the Building? No, not yet. Okay, I want to watch really that good. like sitting down with a blanket and some popcorn and like enjoy okay. that. It's really good and it's hilarious. It's so good. I want. I, I remember. Yeah, it was the last show it's, you told me about. Yeah, it. so so good. Um, Van. In, so you have not seen Dune, right? Nope. I do want Dune is there for me to like. I need to go see this well, in the theaters. It, I forgot you don't have HBO Max <laughs> though, do you? No. Okay, because it is on HBO Max. And I've been told that Dune is a movie where people are like, yeah, if I didn't see that in the theater, I probably wouldn't care about it. 
Yeah, because the the way the the music is with the score, um, some of the shots, it's a beautiful film. Yeah, similar oh. to Eternals, is a beautiful film, and Dune leaves you with like a, what was that? But it's going to be part of a trilogy, so there's there's more to it. And that's not a spoiler because it's very well known at this point and everything too. So you do get left with a little bit wanting more, but Dune is definitely there's a lot plenty of WTF is going on here. I love things, Zend- which is I okay. Also love Zendaya, so I'll go see it. Um, friend of the show Nick Andrade was the one who told me about Eternals, and he was like, "Was that right? Like nothing special." He it's a setup film. Yeah, he told me he's like the ending kind of makes it worth it, but he told me, and I'll have you answer this: Is okay. the acting really as bad as he's putting it out to be? He's no, like, I thought the acting was great. Okay, he told me he's like, "There's a token funny guy." And then everyone's pretty okay. Angelina Jolie's good, and he's like, then everyone else is just like, whatever. No, I well, here's the. It depends on how much you want me to spoil. Well, I don't care about spoilers, but in case other people have. Okay, I'm gonna talk about Eternals right now. Okay, the acting was really good because they're androids. Oh, that's weird. So. V- the the Eternals are built to not evolve, meaning what they have is what they have when it comes to their overall emotions, their personality and everything for thousands of years. Like for 7,000 years, nothing about them really changes. They How? do feel some emotions like love and caring and everything like that and, and humor, but that does not evolve. How into the movie do I find this out? I'd say probably about halfway to three-fifths okay that's fine i thought it was gonna be like final scene and i was gonna be like no. fuck you for that <laughs> no 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 but, no but it, but that's the, the, the acting's good because of what because, given the scenario that it's in i thought it was beautifully cast um it's a beautifully done movie chloe Zhao. i mean that's what i expected from her um it paints an interesting picture of things it felt sort of rushed but also slow if that makes any sense at all to anyone Mm -hmm. that's seen it or even just to you uh that it would be supported now because we see how good tv series have been with so many things when it comes to science fiction and fantasy and stuff the tv series help can explain and and the plot and character development like in star wars even like in marvel now that it could have been good to have that supplemented Uh, but it does paint a lot going in for the future it sets up three different movies Okay. Like it's it's one of those movies where it's going to become a film that gets reverted back to a lot reference, just like how uh, Endgame <laughs> made you have to go back to watch Thor to the Dark World. Yeah. You're like the worst one, really. <laughs> but but it sets it up, or how um, what was it? WandaVision set up to where you had to go back and watch Age of Ultron. <laughs> You're like, yes. okay, come on. Uh, I so, mean, Age of Ultron's not that bad. Not that bad, but, but this is going to be the kind of film because it sets up three different things, which it makes me very curious because I go full movie nerd, nerd here. Mm-hmm. This is the type of thing, too, where we're getting so deep into comic lore and everything, too, that Kevin Feige has a big job ahead of him because there's so many films that are sprouting off to different storylines and building up so much the MCU that for consistency and not having plot loopholes and can keep continuing storylines... They have, they must have a Google sheet that is taking up so many rows and columns <laughs> to keep, maybe not a Google sheet, maybe something a little more secure, a SharePoint Excel sheet, a piece of paper <laughs> uh, that's keeping everything together because it does have a lot of things in it. And it is kind of neat too, because if you're a history buff as well, they're trying to connect the characters to what lore was told throughout history mm. and that what we hear about certain historical figures was actually an eternal Mm. that is based on certain to, to tie things into what we know about human history the uh the one thing i was just scrolling through on google there uh looking at the cast for eternals mm-hmm. pat oswalt's in it and uh i uh, mm, mm. <sighs> is it a gimmick you like a small little role that he's in i see what he is yeah yeah it's, it's, it's again if you made it this far it's a spoiler it's not even until the credits oh that sucks. See, you're spoiling it yourself by looking shit up now. I am. I did this to myself, though. You did do it to yourself. I, I didn't no know that's what you're doing when you're distracted. Well, I just, I saw who plays, you I guess. Turn it off. Well, I know shut who it, plays him now. You're done. Yes, yes, you're sir. You're done. Yes, sir. 
I'll, I'll eat my chocolate bar and. No, what what I gave Eternals show. I gave Eternals a B. That's fair. I I and feel like you judge movies the way I judge them, though. I I try, and so Jeremy K. Gover, one of my best friends, who is awful at reviewing films, like he, it's for some reason he gives films bad scores. He's like, why'd you go see it? I'm not gonna go see a movie uh, if you're watching the YouTube on this. <laughs> I don't go see films unless I truly have an interest that I think I'm going to enjoy. I'm not going to waste my time or my money on something I'm unsure about. I'll wait to see what other people say, which I know you do that a lot too. Um, but for him, he actually, because we both saw it the same night, but he went to an earlier show in a different theater and he's like, call me when you get done. <laughs> so he had to let it sit a little bit to give his rating because what he gave his movie rating was cast, A, cinematography, A, um, Let's see, storytelling, A, all these different music, A, overall score, D minus. <laughs> He's like, I didn't get it. Oh. He's like, everything was great, but I didn't get it, man. And he's like, maybe I'm just not as much of a nerd or I didn't like click. And it's because Eternals is different. It truly like, is every, a different type of Marvel film. Every review I keep seeing on the internet is like, Different. How this is different from the rest of the MCU? It is. Why the is this has changed the pace of the MCU in terms of like, I know there's uh, an adult scene in there, kind of thing. It's like, oh, oh that, yes, yeah, it's, it's like the first, right? And that's all that kept popping up. I'm like, okay, like this is this is different. They're trying to be it not is. edgier based on what it looks like, but just different, more real, yeah, more more real to tell a story and everything too, because it's an integral part of a story within it as well and so i get it and it's like man they're the, <clears throat> marvel's getting into comic books lore now like they're getting deep into the characters that they're telling it's not about captain america or iron man anymore they're diving deep like guardians of the galaxy was actually diving deep but it worked out because of the type of story that james gunn told mm -hmm. eternals is a much broader bigger celestial story that is spanning thousands of years all of a sudden so it's different. So I couldn't blame him on that score. It's like, if you don't get it, then I, I understand because he gave everything else an A. Yeah. That's why I give it overall a B. But everything, everything is a lead up to Spider Man. That is the one they're Shit. closing out the, the year with. They're closing out the year. It's a holiday season movie. It's all about Spider Man, baby. Like, we have one so trailer. I, I have to see it then. <laughs> Like I have not not Spider Man. Obviously, I'm gonna go see Spider Man. That's not even a question. But I have to go see Eternals. Well, I'm um, no this. Uh, there's no connection between Eternals and Spider Man. I'll, I'll say. Oh, that. okay. No, I'm just saying that Marvel, in terms of the releasing, you had Black Widow, which was way delayed and fine. Shang Chi was huge, and that had implications further beyond Spider Man, but definitely dealing with like the next kind of Avengers setup. You have Eternals that sets up three different movies. You had Venom. Two, let there be carnage actually helping to set up spider-man potentially as well a lot of catch enough to do yeah i would i mean venom is a fun movie it's not a good movie but it's a fun movie i I've... The, the latest one uh that's the way i can describe it because it's not like i'm gonna be like watching it all the time it's not one of those movies but spider-man has so much hype and implications on it because we have one trailer one movie poster that's it we're a month away. That's all we have. Now, we could get more after Eternals gets the, its run through. Get a, a teaser. Weeks, but one trailer is all we have for Spider-Man. Like, they don't have to do anything more because the hype is there. They know it. Oh, yeah. We know and we're I... already getting a couple of villains to return. We know we're getting some of it, but they don't have to tell us anything more. They know they're going to sell a shit ton of tickets. It's. Do you think it's going to be the top grossing? Of the year. I mean, of all MCU. No. Where do you think it'll be? I think top three. I think top three, yeah. Endgame. Especially, especially if the moments happen that we all hope happens. Oh dear God, please! <laughs> Which is Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Yeah, that's all I want. If that that and here's the thing, that's why you damn well need to be seeing it ASAP because you yeah, know I'll, people I'll, out there are assholes aren't going to spoil it. I'll go see it. Like I have, as soon as tickets become available, you better reserve. Yeah. I, I will. Don't worry. Okay. Well, I I just say that because like people kind of forget. Like, oh no, I'll see it open in weekend. I'm going, if you're somebody that's on social media, which it is part of your job to be on social media, right? Oh yeah. It's gonna get spoiled for you because people are assholes. You know, I'm amazed James Bond didn't get spoiled. Like, 
I I saw Bond opening weekend, but mm-hmm. I uh, I didn't mute anything and I didn't see any Bond spoilers after. And I mean, usually like after a big movie, you see spoilers pop up on Twitter. And you're like, ah, oh, good thing I saw it. But I saw nothing about Bond, even though. Well, I think because even though it's a highest grossing film, it's not going to spark as much conversation yeah. as these major like things. Yeah, especially too because you're probably not on European Twitter. <laughs> How do you know? Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I mean, correct me for wrong. I have a different persona in Europe. No, okay, sure. I am Matthias. Uh, oh God. <laughs> but but yeah, so that's our pop culture talk. Lastly, just wanted to close real quick with I'm so excited because for some reason you all like life updates when we Hell get yeah. them. Hell yeah. Um, for the most part, have the honeymoon planned. Okay, I know nothing about this. So, okay. I'm excited. Walk me through like okay. everything. So, first of all, to keep it hockey related. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> it's a hockey pod. Well, hockey and pop culture podcast. Yeah, but this is your honeymoon. Well, no, no, no. It just fit perfectly. It, it's during the Olympic break. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to be like, we're going to see four different NHL games. No, F, we're going to do that. that. No, no, no. I'm not doing work uh, on honeymoon. No, it's just because it, it falls during the Olympic break. So, meaning. I'm not going to miss a Preds game because that's something that's part of my job. Like mm-hmm. I have to watch Preds games to be able to talk about them. I'm not going to miss any of that. Uh, so we have a cruise on Celebrity Cruise Lines. Nice. Uh, three destinations out of Fort Lauderdale. We'll be going to San Juan, Puerto Rico, Tortola, British Virgin Islands, and Phillipsburg, um, St. Martin. That's on. How long are you going for? Seven nights. Yeah. I, you and I were talking about cruises. Off the air last yeah. show. And I remember you being like, five's not enough, four's not enough, like it has to be seven. So I'm glad yeah. you stuck with your guns and you stuck went to with seven. seven. And we're doing aqua class. What the which hell is aqua class? So... Is that like gentle aqua fit where you like no, do aerobics? No, 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 no. Oh. So aqua class is a quote unquote healthier like state room and everything, but you have a concierge class, you have aqua class, and then you have your sweets. Sweets was gonna be a big jump in price. This is the next best thing to have in a suite. So the room's a little bit bigger. Uh, you have access to one of the uh, one of the restaurants that has a little bit healthier options or I'm, more I'm natural foods and everything. So it's not going to be as bad for your stomach, which we might do that. But you have access to all the other restaurants as well. But this is an extra access. You also have a heightened breakfast menu for delivery to your delivery to your room that is included. You will also have uh, champagne in your room every night <laughs> I'm, look, I'm looking at aqua class like on the celebrity website as you're talking about oh, this yeah and then you also have unlimited access to the spa and the spa has like six or something different rooms there for relaxation one of them has like heated uh, chairs that's in a sunroom another one is like a shower rainfall room where it's like different shower heads all throughout the room we can just stand out under like, the rainfall and let it fall upon you which I think that's going to be my favorite. That's pretty dope, yeah. Uh, pretty dope. Uh, like a steam room, a cold room, stuff like that. Um, you Bring your, your shoes, like nice shoes. Yeah. Complimentary shoe shine. Exactly, complimentary shoe shine. I'm not like I'm uh, not downplaying that. That's I've, no, no, uh, that's the thing. Shit's cool to so, me. So the cool thing though, because this is on the Celebrity Edge, which is a pretty new ship. It launched 2018, and you think it's sat dormant for at least like what 18 months <laughs> during the pandemic. So it's a, still a pretty new ship. And for those of you that are on TikTok, uh, this was Captain Kate's ship that she uh, uh, captained for uh, the longest time with Bug. But the way the balconies work, dude, you know, like how just in a hotel room, even older cruise ships, when I say older, it's like anything like before 2018, Mm -hmm. you'd have like a door or a sliding door or something to get to your balcony. That's not the case with this one. It is like an all-inclusive balcony, meaning it's the doors fold and slide out and you open up the entire thing to the balcony, and then you press a button, and the window on the balcony drops down. I am watching this right now. To completely open it up, so you have a walkout balcony. That's sick. Yeah, I'm literally looking like at pictures in this YouTube video. If you're listening on the podcast, you yeah. heard the YouTube video play for a second. I'm sorry. Um, so, but it actually this makes... This is sick. You actually have a walkout balcony. So you could actually have the window closed, and it, it makes the space of your bedroom be bigger. Yeah, the that's right wild. There. Also, so the it's... bathroom looks really nice. Yeah, for a cruise ship especially. Yeah, usually you get in a cruise ship bathroom, you're like, eh, okay. Yeah, 
And the good thing, too, for those of you that have ever cruised, you'll appreciate this. When you do these concierge classes or whatnot, you get priority boarding and debarkation. That's boarding is okay. I mean, that's cool. But getting off the ship at 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning when you're tired after drinking everything you could the night before because you want to get your money's worth for your Mm -hmm. drink package. Being able to get off the ship and go straight to customs instead of having to wait an hour in a customs line is worth it 100%. Yeah. Because I remember last time we did a cruise, and I'm saying all this because we're it's a honeymoon. We're going out on this. Like, it's got to be fun. Mm Mm-hmm. But the last time we did a cruise was after I sold my previous house and bought a new one and saved some money to take a vacation. So we did like a four night cruise on Celebrity and did like a suite to have that experience. When we had the priority debarkation, we walk out. Our luggage is actually right there. We don't have to go through the whole process of claiming it like everybody else does yep. in the groups. And we walk past the line that is looks like a queue for the most popular amusement park ride at the fair. And we ask someone like, so about how long is that wait? Oh, that's about 60 minutes. Oh, my God. So imagine your vacation that you just lo- had a wonderful time enjoying seven nights. And also you have to wait in a line for an hour in a barn, basically. I'd be pissed. Through customs. Yeah, I, no, like, I'm right up to customs. <laughs> this ship looks nuts. It's beautiful. Like the magic carpet thing that they're showing here. Yeah. That um, hangs out over the side. Yeah. The where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? The glamorous <laughs> Grand Plaza. Looks yeah, and they have four main dining rooms that feature different styles of food, which is Uh, nice. I'm gonna need you to do one thing for me. I need you to go to the casino and I need you to do one spin at roulette on black. Okay. And if you wanna, and if you wanna be spicy about it and just do it once, black twenty four. That's it. Black twenty four. Okay. That's That's all I ask. That's all I ask. I should probably wait. No, they probably I'd probably get in trouble for recording it, wouldn't I? (laughs) Yeah, oh, no, 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 that's bad. bad no. <laughs> you can tell I don't gamble. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that I've been in trouble doing that before. Don't do that. Oh, my God. So afterwards, because we're already going to be in Florida. <laughs> There's more? <laughs> you probably already know where I'm trying to go Yeah, with this. you're going to Disney. <laughs> we're going to try. Of course. <laughs> for two For two days. So I'm trying to work it up the plan to see what it costs to do a one-way car rental, mm-hmm. which is not cheap. From Fort Lauderdale because the train doesn't the train is not finished yet to Orlando, or it would be it be really tough. Uh, and then flights only happen twice a day from Fort Lauderdale or West Palm Beach to Orlando because it's just a short drive anyways. Three and hours. E- yeah, and they're either at like six in the morning or eight o'clock at night. So just gonna drive and try to find a place to stay. But I want to do Epcot so we can continue the drinking on the honeymoon mm-hmm. and do Magic Kingdom. And be done, and then go home, have a buffer day, then back to work on a Friday, and then have the weekend again. That's pretty good. So basically, um, a week and a half long honeymoon. You can take a bus from Fort Lauderdale to Orlando. Yeah, nope, not on happening. your honeymoon. Nope. For twenty bucks, nope. I'll fly down and I'll drive you. You'll chauffeur us. I'll chauffeur you. Three oh, hours, okay. twenty-five minutes. Just show up. If oh, I had f you money, you know I would. I know. I know. I would I get totally... you like this nice limo, and then bl- with the blackout, so you see me for literally two minutes before, two minutes after. I just go have a nice day, and that's it. No, it would be hilarious though is if you had someone else outside hand hand with the sign, and then we don't know it's you until we get in. You drop the the privacy window down. What's up, <laughs> motherfucker? Yeah. And then I just roll it up as you're going. Yeah. What? And then we. Just what drive. the hell? Yeah. <laughs> That would be fun. I would enjoy that. That like so, I that's see if me and you were rich, that's the kind of things we do. Right. Yeah. This is one of those things too. Like this is not this is not rich money. This is saving up and also and also wonderful gift from the parents. Like we got our wedding gift early, oh, uh, nice. which is nice. Um, and that's helping with that obviously. And I'm having to hoard my vacation days mm. and my floating holidays. It is all going to that. That's pretty good. Um, which is good because my boss even like you enjoy just enjoy. it's your honeymoon yeah that's, you enjoy it that's when you know you have a good workplace like a good workplace yeah. environment well especially because it would be through our annual enrollment and the pressure will be not as heavy mm-hmm. at that time the pressure is always on but it won't be as heavy as it is right now but that's that's what's new with me that's i don't have anything to share that's that good so okay uh-uh. well you learned you learned exactly what a sous vide is even i did what that's, it was yeah i just <laughs> to me if you were like the thing that goes in water, you stick it in in a bag, and I'd be like, "Yeah, I know that." 
It's called a cutoff penis. That's why mine looks like that. <laughs> oh, I told better that vacuum special. seal it for freshness. That's why people laugh at me. Sheesh. <laughs> All right. Well, glad to be back. I'm glad to catch up with you, with you, buddy. Yeah, this this was good. Let's let's do this more often. Let's, let's do it again. People are like, yeah, I know, David. Yeah, I keep screwing for it. Shit, do it. Uh, uh, I was gonna say, let's sorry. let's plan our <clears throat> next podcast where we do that off air. Yeah, we'll plan it. Yeah. All right, folks. He's at Best of Matt at Triple P Podcast underscore. You can always tweet us demanding more episodes. Remember, easier if you just tweet at both of us instead of just the podcast because we'll probably check that more often. Even though I have a column for it on TweetDeck all the way to the right, uh, and I'm at Justin B Bradford. Uh, make sure you're subscribing to us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, this has been Triple P Prince Pucks Benoist. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>